guys, this is Bernadette Studios, and welcome back! Today, we are going to be playing a game called Tundra. This is another game on Game Jolt, and let's go ahead and get... Hello? Hello? Um... Uh, um... Okay? Where are you now? Wait, what? You're walking? Were you asleep? Did you sleepwalk? Where are you? It's all white. That intro was a bit unexpected, I do have to say. But holy cow. What do we what do we got? Oh, it's all white. I'm supposed to click white. Okay. You don't remember. No, wait. You're Dimitri. How you ended up here is a blur, but you must definitely know who you are. These aren't my clothes. The last thing you remember. You had dinner with some friends. It got late and you began the short walk home. And as if you just took a look at your shoes, something changed. And you look up and it was cold, windy, and hostile. And white. Trying to understand where you are is hard in this complete whiteness. You shiver. You wear some kind of gray overalls. Your name is stitched in them. It's thick, but doesn't keep all the cold out. Maybe something in the pockets? You dig in those deep pockets and manage to fish out some gloves and a beanie. Well, that'll keep us warm. As a child, you've visited places like this before. Hard, cold places that provide little or no shelter. Temperature, animals, hunger and weariness are your greatest enemies at a place like this. On a tundra. The snow isn't that deep, and you can feel the permafrost through the sole of your shoes as you traverse across the landscape. You try to warm your cheeks with the back of your hand and feel the beginning of a beard. Didn't you shave before dinner? Irina doesn't like you in a beard. Ooh, who's Irina? Is that my lady friend? No landmarks. Nothing to rest on. Nothing to eat. No help in sight. No hope. From where you live, it's approximately 580 miles to the closest similar location. You couldn't have walked that far. Is Irina worried? How long have you been gone? Finally, you think you see something, or are you going insane from this cold? It's hard to distinguish exactly what it is. Might it be help, or a mere mirage? Your stomach growls and you are thirsty, but you manage to find a little more energy somewhere deep inside you. So it actually seems like this game is a text-based game. I thought you actually did a bit of walking around and exploring. Or maybe you get to that later on. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe it's just building up story here. We will find out. A tree, a naked tree, all alone like you. You feel mocked in some way as that a small portion of you hope to you try... Wait, what? Well, you feel in some way as that a small portion of hope you try to survive on is depleting faster than you can manage. Read it right that time. You hope to refill it here at this tree. You bend down, scooping up some snow to try and quench your thirst, but it tastes off. Disgusting. You vomit immediately. Something is in the snow. Someone peed in that snow, man. You should have checked to see if it was yellow. You god... Why didn't you check to see if it was yellow snow, Dimitri? Come on! A tree provides no shelter or sustenance of any kind. For a second, you think about how that would have worked and why you thought that a simple, more or less dead tree would be the aid you seek. The tree trunk seems to have a small opening. At this point of desperation, you'll try anything. Oh, maybe we can hide in there. As with your pockets, you have to dig. Your hand and arm is swallowed by the hole that at first didn't strike you as this deep. There might be some sort of danger inside, but you're not in a position to be picky. You feel something. You grab it, pull your arm up from the depth. An old plastic covered, probably not working, somewhat dirty radio is now in your hand. That plate of hope is yet filled again. Help! You scream for help. But the darn thing doesn't seem to be working. You fiddle with the dials, but even though you get some small static, it fades quickly. Night is coming. A tundra is a dangerous place during the day, and even more so at night. 
you decide to spend the night at the tree. You don't sleep that night. It's impossible in the cold. You just rub your arms and chest, trying to survive. Dawn. At this point, you feel it must be easier to name the few parts that aren't frozen solid from the cold. Your entire body might shatter if it were to hit a concrete floor. You try another scoop of snow, but the same thing happens again. You vomit. As you scout the area, you see something. A few feet away from you, you see an animal. It just sits there, shaking from the cold. As you try to close in, it runs away. In just a few seconds, it has disappeared into the whiteness. What? Oh! I don't know what the fuck that is. Maybe it's some kind of monkey. Oh! Sorry, I didn't mean to right click there. Maybe it's some kind of uh, monkey. Maybe... I don't know. A yeti? Oh yeah, it could be a yeti since we're in a, a, a tundra. Anyways, let's continue on. What was that? A monkey? What? Oh, what the fuck was that noise? I'm getting kind of creeped out. I didn't think this was a horror game, but I, I that 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 really spooked me. Uh, what was that? A monkey? What's it doing in the tundra? A sound is heard. Glorious static, then silence. To be free, uh, you choose. I don't know what the fuck that means. Hello, I need help. I don't know where I am. I'm freezing to death, but no reply. You panic and feel so close to being rescued. Oh, oh, stop doing that fucking static shit, man. I don't like that. It's fucking spooky. Take a look behind me. Nothing's there, but it's fucking spooky. Anyways, you panic and feel so close to being rescued, even though your gut tells you that something is a bit off. What do they mean by free? What? I don't know. A leg. Thank you for your reply. Please continue. Continue? Continue where? What the fuck is happening? You feel desperate. And if the ground wasn't so cold and would probably lower your body temperature, you'd collapse. But death isn't an option. Not yet. So you carry on with the radio in one of your deep, deep pockets. You use the edge of your zipper on the overall to do a small mark on the tree. What? You motherfucker, stop doing that. So you'll know in which way you went in case you needed to relocate. This tree is your only friend right now, but after a while, the tree is nothing but a dot. Oleg. Oleg likes cats. Oleg likes to fish. Oleg's dad is dead due to hard work in a coal mine. Oh, I'm sorry, Oleg. Oleg likes music and dances very well. Oleg occasionally dances with his mother. What? Hello? This is getting weirder and weirder. The voice on the other end is robotic, stale, somewhat distorted. Oleg talks long walks, sometimes along the canal. Oleg likes water, but he never goes for a swim. As a child, Oleg lost his pet in a well. Help! The wind hits your face like waves. You almost don't feel it anymore. The shelter is a must if you don't want to die here on this godforsaken tundra. Oleg has a bad leg. Oleg has a problem working. Oleg is often sad and feels lonely. Oleg's mom makes him cakes. Oleg's dream is to work as a farmer. Fuck you! You hear me? You think you see something in the far distance. What is it? What is it? Oleg spends a lot of time taking care of his mother, who is not well. Oleg's mother tells him he's wasting his life by doing this. Oleg likes ice cream and soda. You don't even try to answer anyone. You think you'll go insane. It's your old friend, the tree. Have you been going in circles? It can't be more than an hour since you left the tree. Your mark is still there. Please dig 20 footsteps to the north. What with what? Hello? Dig with your hands. You get an eerie feeling about the tree, as if something is different. You dive deep into the hole once again. Deeper than before, and your whole arm is inside the tree. And your face is pressed against the bark. But then you feel something. Anything. A very small, sturdy shovel, like the one hikers may carry to dig a bivouac. Was it there before? No. Did you miss it? As you retrieve the radio? You have no idea where north... Whoa, excuse me. <laughs> where north is. So you pick one direction, count to 20, and start to dig. It doesn't take long to reach the permafrost, and even though it's sturdy, it's a sturdy shovel, it can't beat that type of frozen hell. You have to dig somewhere else. 
<coughs> excuse me, you're beaten and tired. Your hands ache. Your head aches. Your body aches. You've tired or you've tried more or less all directions. Maybe just a bit to the left of that last hole. Clank! You strike the metal surface one more time and hear a metallic sound. You wipe off the snow and discover a hatchway. A big hand that welcomes you and you grab it, hoping it's not stricken with rust. You slowly manage to move the handle. You open it and climb into the darkness inside. And a ladder, you climb down. You are in a small room with metal walls. You feel somewhat scared, angry, sad, distorted, shocked, and other feelings that you don't remember the name of. To the right is a door. In front of you is a hallway. On a pedestal in the middle lies a gun. Let's get that gun. Dust covers the gun's surface. You've never even held a handgun before. Only your uncle's is hunting rifle. Pick that bad boy up. You grab the gun. It has only one bullet in the chamber. Okay. Um, let's go down the right. The door doesn't have a handle. It can't be pushed open. Okay. Let's go forward. You enter the hallway and suddenly you hear, um, hear via speakers above. You are soon free. To be free, kill. Oleg! Simply kill to be free. You hear your own heartbeat and squeeze the gun in your hand. Oh no. Take a life of your own back. Kill Oleg. Um, what is this place? The hallway takes you to a small room without any exits. A chair is in front of you. Blood splatters are still visible after some kind of violent occurrence. Behind the chair is some kind of window. The voice coming from the speakers in the ceiling is deafening. As it seems, the window is your only way out of here. You try to break it at first with your elbow while on the chair. But as the thick glass won't break, you suddenly remember the gun. Should you sacrifice your only bullet on getting out of here or save it? Let's save it. Something tells me that some creepy motherfucker's gonna come out and try and get me, so we're gonna save it. You start working on the window, hitting it with the shovel. The window is thick as hell and it's barely scratched. This might work, but it'll require a lot of work. Let's hit it again. Never fucking give up. Keep hitting that shit. Hit it. Hit it again. Keep hitting it. Keep fucking hitting it. Finally, you manage to break the glass. You feel tired, but the broken glass that cuts your arm can't stop you as you climb onward toward freedom. Never give up, people. Never. You are in a room full of computers and displays, and the front of the window is a table full of pens and papers. To the right is a door. Computers? Uh, the computer in the room are glitchy and they don't seem to be working but you find that one is still functional it's hooked up to some sort of cord that you follow under some trash you find a radio like yours you look at the screen and find a keyboard you hit and enter and here kill blank space blank space blank space blank space kill kill to be free I've got to kill Oleg? I don't want to kill. Displays? One of the glitchy screens that isn't all smashed up shows some kind of radar, maybe more like a sonar. A map on the other screen is focused on South America. You look around and find paper maps. All on South America. Maybe I was from a South American country, possibly. In the front window is a table full of pens and papers. Um, what have we done? Oh, boy. Getting a little bit of, uh... Goosebumps, to say the least. Um, to the right is a door, so let's go ahead and check that out. You are in a big room. It seems to be a recreational area with a pool table and some sofas. Door are, doors are found to the left, right, behind you, and in front of you. Let's check the left. Um, you are in a room full of computers. No, that's not right. Let's check the right. You are in a hallway. To the left and right are doors, as well as behind you and in front of you. Let's go to the front. The sleeping quarters, it feels abandoned, and it's rather sparsely decorated. There's only one bed. Did they sleep in shifts? Some stuff is found on the table. Let's check out the stuff. Amongst the stuff, you find a diary. A lot of pages are torn out, and the diary is partially burned. But the first and last pages can be read. I had such a weird dream last night. I seldom dreamed, but this one was memorable. I was in a house. There was a knock at the door. And it was the dwarves. They came to visit. After they left came the pigs. Then I looked outside and saw the seasons had changed. 
Then it was all quiet. I let my arms dangle along my body. But when I looked at my hand, there was a pentagram carved into my palm. Then I woke up. Pretty trippy dream. Pretty trippy dream indeed. Last page. April 19th. I know what we are doing here is rather unconventional, and we do not use unconventional methods. But even I feel that something is a bit off. They don't tell us even enough to put the, the pieces together. We're but mere pawns in a maze. This facility is like a maze. We've been talking about fabricating results to release HQ. That's nothing compared to the moral issues that we face upon creating this weapon. Jeffrey is starting to drift away. I find him sometimes in the kitchen, just staring at his hand. I worry for all of us. I can't really say that this isn't what I signed up for, because I really never signed up for anything. I guess papers could act as evidence. It's 0345 AM. It's time for my shift. So it does look like they were um, taking shifts. So let's take a left and check out the pool table. You pick up one of the pool cues, but almost immediately put it back down. As you see, the tip is covered with blood. Oh boy. All right, let's go over to the front. Uh, this is the kitchen. Plates are filled with moldy food. The fridge is still running. You can use a zip of water. A small metal cupboard is next to the stove. The cupboard is locked and won't budge. The metal is made of something more than a solid. Water, you turn on the faucet faucet and not at first nothing happens but then you hear this very quiet hissing sound you lean in and hear it even clearer at the same time as you pick up this weird smell it's gas you turn it off immediately why was gas coming out of the faucet little bit weird some freaky ass shit going on what about the fridge you open the fridge hoping for food but it's completely empty who leaves plates of moldy food but cleans out the fridge all righty um, let's go behind us. A bathroom, very small, so probably only a few people spent time at this facility. Not that much to see. You counted three toothbrushes and think that that's probably how many stayed there. Okay. Let's go get out of here, virus protection. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's go to the right. Let's go to the right. Uh, you are in a very small transit area. There are two elevators. One elevator is marked personnel and one is made marked freight. To the left is a door and behind you is a hallway. Let's let's go to the one that's um, named freight. You click the button next to the freight elevator. It opens and you enter. Inside is a panel. It only has one button that doesn't seem to respond as you push it. Next to the button is a small slot the size of a credit card. Now that it is a key card that doesn't seem to Okay, what about personnel? Um, you are in the personnel elevator. There are three buttons. You are on the third floor. What about the second one? Oh, so there's... Are they different? They don't seem to be different outlays. You are in a similar room as the third floor, but there's only one elevator. You try and open the door, but it's welded shut. You knock and shout without any response. Okay. The hallway is filled with rubble that blocks your way. To clear the area would require a lot of energy. Energy you don't have. Among the rubble are cabinets, clothes, chairs, beds, and even books. Was someone trying to keep out? Okay, let's go to the first floor then. You are in a similar room as on the third floor, but there's only one elevator. This is weird. I don't know what to think about this game. This kind of reminds me of the Moon Sliver or the Moon Silver. No, it was the Moon Sliver. Yeah, the Moon Sliver. If this game very much reminds me of that, although it's really a lot more text-based, but I'm liking this so far. Let's try the left door. Um, welded shut. What about behind us? Um, you find a door, okay? Inside the room is an empty pedestal. A hallway in front of you is blocked by rubble. In the middle of the room is a ladder. To the right is a door. What about the ladder? Climb! Oh! Oh, are we going up to the tundra? Maybe this is a bad thing. The whiteness blinds your eyes. The cold freezes your skin. The wind chills your bones again. 
How can this be? As you take a look down the hatch, you realize that when you fled from the tundra into that small room, there was another tundra right beneath your feet. How many tundras are there? We hurry back to the elevator. Um, let's go to the hallway behind us. Door. And to the right. You are in a hallway. There's a door to your left. Let's do it. Uh, inside the room is an empty pedestal. Room, ladder. To the right is a door. Let's try the ladder. Let's try it. I think we're just going to go back up to Tundra again. If I'm not mistaken. What do we got? Tundra? Yeah. Wind chills my bones again. Yep. It's another Tundra. That's very weird. Okay. Back up to the third floor, I suppose. Um, let's go behind us. You enter a hallway. You walk for a while before the hallway ends. There's a door behind you and to the left. Let's go to the left. The door is locked. You try kicking it, but it doesn't budge. You think you hear a vague sound that resembles the howling wind on the, on the tundra. Let's go behind us. Uh, you're in a room that must have been a morgue. Oh, fuck no. No, that's not good. That is not good in a game like this. The walls are covered, covered with metal doors, and on the floor, something is covered by some sheets. The stench is unbearable. In front of you is a door. What about the sheets? Some tags. Oleg! Who are these people? You look under the sheets and discover a massive pile of human cadavers. You shudder and must stop yourself from vomiting. The stage of decay differs on all the bodies. Some are more or less just moldy bags of flesh. Some seem to be more fresh. There's Oleg. I don't know what the hell that's supposed to mean, but there's Oleg. The guy that we were supposed to kill. Um, I'm kind of getting freaked out by this shit now. Oh, man. I, I'm actually getting, like, goosebumps everywhere. This is this is quite an intriguing story, if I do say so myself. I don't know. Maybe it's just something. Maybe it's just... Oh, my God. Damn. All right. Let's continue reading on. You turn to the wall. Most of the doors are already opened and without any content. You open one door that's closed. Inside is a body. You slide out the steel bed. It's a man all naked. The toe tag says nothing more than employee number 19. Okay. Um, what can we do then? Oh, we could go behind us. Um, this is clearly an office. There's a typical desk with a typical chair. <clears throat> Excuse me. There are some books, and behind the chair is some kind of cabinet. Let's check out the books. All the books seem to be about psychology, sociology, philosophy, and behavioral science. You also find that some poor magazines are hidden amongst the books. They seem old and show some rocky fellow having sex with a black-haired girl. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Let's check the cabinet. The cabinet is more or less empty with the exception of a safe. It seems more advanced as it, is, uh, as it has no handle, no keyhole, or other way of opening. The only way to open it is by fingerprint recognition. Your thumb doesn't work, obviously. Okay, let's go behind us. There's some kind of archive. Um, let's check the filing cabinets. You rummage through the filing cabinets, and there are thousands of folders. They are all labeled with a name. Juan Guire, Stephanie Malcolm, John Olison, a bunch of different names. Who are these people? Okay. Um. Okay. Let's go, let's go up, take a left, and go behind. Um, no, we were already in here. Okay, left. Huh. I don't know where to go. Where haven't I gone, I guess is the question. You rummage through the bed. All you find are some candy wrappers, magazines, and a comb. But then you feel something hard inside a pillowcase. Inside the pillowcase, you find a small key. Oh! Okay, um, sleeping quarters, there's some stuff found on a table. Amongst the stuff, you find a diary. Nope, we've already read that. Okay, so we got a key that was actually in the bedroom, which is over here. Um, so, I'm 
guessing second floor left. Oh, welded shot. Um, what about behind us? No, that's not it. One maybe, and then the door on the left, welded shut. Huh? I wonder what this key goes. Whoa, maybe it's the uh, door over here that we couldn't get to before. Okay, I was searching the office and I found a note on the desk um, that I don't think I saw before, or at least I didn't catch it. So we'll go ahead and read it now. October 19th, HQ has sent us a response. Our request was denied. We shall remain here until further notice or until our tour is completed. Quantity is not a problem. The tests are not giving us the result we seek. We are feeling somewhat unbalanced lately. Employee number 19, that's the same guy that we found in the, uh, the morgue area in the metal coffer. Okay, so I was in the kitchen and I looked at the cupboard so we can actually use the key on the cupboard it seems like here so you try the key you found and manage to unlock the cupboard but it's only filled with utensils why are people locking up some blunt knives ladles and a spatula there's some scissors the only thing remotely effective against what you might uh what might come at you so we pick up the scissors um okay well now we have scissors but not really useful um all right, I guess I'll continue looking for stuff. Okay, so um, I accidentally skipped over the dialogue. I apologize for that. But um, what we did was um, cut off employee number 19's thumb with our scissors. And now we should be able to go back to that one room and um, use it on the cupboard. Use his finger on the co uh, the cabinet here. The cabinet holds a safe. It opens via fingerprint recognition. So we'll use his thumb, open it up, and it looks like we got a plastic key card, so we can pick that bad boy up. And I remember seeing something that needed a key card, but I can't remember exactly where. Oh, yes! The freight elevator! Okay, let's... Um, you click the button next to the freight elevator, it opens and you enter. There's a panel with a small slot that fits something flat and small. Next to it is a keypad that doesn't seem active. Should you insert the keycard you found? Absolutely. You slide in the keycard and the panel lights up. The big button is still not responding to you pushing it, but the keypad is active. Should you pump chain a code or exit? Um... Uh, please enter the first four digits. You can only fail thrice. Oh, 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 what? What? Security measure initiated. What is that? Suddenly the elevator doors close and it starts to descend. It feels as if you're in travel forever. Not knowing where you'll end up, the elevator shakes. Finally, it stops and the door opens. You are in a very small room. You eg exit the elevator, then you hear threat detected. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. It's a turret. <laughs> oh, I done fucked up. The room lights up in front of you, and there's a flamethrower. Oh, it's a flamethrower, not a machine gun. Even better. You reach for your gun and aim for the gas tank. Shoot. You hear a ve you were very lucky and managed to hit the gas tank. The flamethrower is destroyed and poses no threat to you. But behind you, the elevator door closes and it goes back up. There are no buttons to recall it back down. You feel weary and tired. At least the heat from the blast got you warm. You think you see something burning the rubble. You burn your hand as you try to clear a path through the rubble. But it doesn't seem to bother you. You see a door. You open the door and discover a long tunnel. You have to crawl on all fours as it's so narrow. Your knees hurt, as, do, as does your back. You are hungry, thirsty, scared, and your hands are full of blisters. But you carry on until you literally see a light at the end of the tunnel. The tunnel ends in a smaller room. You can probably stand there. But you have to back out of the tunnel so you won't risk hurting yourself as it's some way down to the floor. You back out and jump down without any problem. But then you turn around and see a dead man on the floor in a lab coat, face down. 
You flip him over and see a badly burnt face. You drop the bloody body upon seeing it, the horrible sight. On the floor is a flashlight that's still glowing. The batteries seem to be down on their last few minutes as it flickers somewhat. On the wall, it's written in blood, I'm so sorry, or rather, rather I'm sorry. There's no going back, no door in this small room, only a ladder. You climb up the ladder step by step until you come to a hatchway. You fear what's on the other side, but you open it anyways. You don't even need to open it all the way until you recognize that horribly cold wind. It's like an aunt you don't like, but you hope she'll treat you well. You stand up, not sure if this is your tundra. In the distance, you think you see something. Oh, a person! A couple of people! Oh! A campfire with people. You think you see three persons huddle, huddle up together to stay warm. But then they spot you. They start to point and shout. Their word, words get eaten by the wind. But one of them comes closer. Better to be vigilant than stupid. The person comes closer. And now you see that same overall as you wear. Where did you come from? You point behind you. Uh, and run towards the hatchway following your own footsteps. Your new acquaintance is right behind you, but when you come to the hatch where it emerged, the hatchway is gone. It was right there, you cry out. Fuck! They moved it again. Fuck! Your new acquaintance doesn't seem to be talking to you. You feel uncomfortable. The situation doesn't feel hostile, but instead more desperate. Suddenly, the person collapses into tears on the cold, icy ground. Is this someone who's given up? You want to distract the whole situation. I'm Dimitri. You put your hand up, ready to be shaken. Between the sobs, the person looks at you and extend, extends a hand and says, Oh, no. The end? Oh, that's it? Um, wow. Wow. Uh, holy crap. That was good. Um, is there anything else? Is that just it? That was Oleg. So we had to kill Oleg to be free of that nightmare. Wow. Um, kind of sad it ends off there. That was a very good narrative, though. I really liked it. Kind of reminds me of the Moon Sliver, although it's quite different, actually. But, um, I really did enjoy that. That was pretty nice. If you guys want to try this game out for yourself, the link is in the description. Go ahead and check it out. Wow. Although you probably don't want to go through it after watching me play, but, um... Give it a positive rating. I really like that. I really do like narrative games, storytelling games. Even, you know, though this one didn't have any really graphical side to it, I still really enjoyed it. So that's going to be it for this episode, guys. If you like this video, please like, please comment, and please, please, please subscribe. It really helps out and it really does mean a lot. So once again, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye!